This video now will give us an example of how the APA results write-up should look. Now, the Word document on the left is where I have copied and pasted the SPSS output, um, again, which would be your appendix. And the document on the right represents the APA statistical results write-up. Um, and so we'll cover that so that you can see where the information comes from. Okay? Um, again, as we did in the t-test, the first thing that you do is you always identify the test and what the purpose of the test was, okay? So here you'll see we said one-way ANOVA. Uh, unlike last week, we said an independent samples t-test. And you state the purpose of the test, what it was conducted for. That's self-explanatory. You then state your independent and your dependent variables, okay? So it's just explicitly clear to the reader what you did and again you can see here that we talked about the independent variable was the vitamin C factor with three levels and you know this helps you really clearly understand what you've done um, in the analysis and then you state the dependent variable and that was a change in the number of days with the cold from the first year to the second okay and again you know you'll see your dependent variable is identified here so this is where you get that information from and you know um, that the column here represents the um, the independent variable okay now the important piece again that I want you to get is the statistical notation where does it come from what does it mean and that all important piece is right here that I'm going to highlight in the uh, light green color excuse me I'm going to highlight this in a light green color so that you can clearly see now the ANOVA was either you're going to say significant or not significant in this case it was significant how do we know that well the area that you want to assess significance from is in the area called the test of between subject effects. And as we mentioned before, regardless of the statistical test, you always look in the SIG column. Now, you're going to look in the SIG column for the grouping variable. In this case, the vitamin A, B, the, I mean the vitamin groups. And this is the data that you would report in your statistical notation. Now, you state F because the ANOVA calculates an F statistic. Unlike the independent samples t-test that calculates a T statistic. So now think about it. When you read an APA or a journal article, when you see the F, you know that perhaps it was probably the ANOVA, but you should clearly know it is the ANOVA because the author, if the article was written well, will tell you the one-way analysis of variance. But when you see F, that should signal you there could be some other tests in the F test family, but it should signal that it was the ANOVA. Now, you also have to report two degrees of freedom instead of one. Remember, in the t-test, we only had one value in here. Well, the first degrees of freedom, the two, right here um, comes from the degrees of freedom for the grouping variable now again the two is calculated as the number of groups minus one n minus one so you had three groups so three minus one equals two so if you're looking at an ANOVA APA write-up and you see the first degrees of freedom is a two you simply now know that there were three groups compared if this number was changed to a four you would know that there were five groups being compared so now you're starting to understand what this stuff means now the 27 again has something to do with the sample size now but that comes from the error term so here you would report the degrees of freedom for the error term which should be right up under the grouping term okay that's where that would come from the F statistic is 4.836 4.84 they rounded the value the P again comes from the SIG column 0 0.016 and they just rounded that up to 0 0.02 this is the important piece the statistical notation again 
The F signifies an ANOVA was done. If the result write-up is done well, it'll tell you it was a one-way ANOVA. The 2 and the 27 are the degrees of freedom from the grouping variable and the error term. You would simply transfer that information from your analysis. The F value is then reported, basically F equals, and then the P value. And because it is less than 0.05, the ANOVA was significant. So there is a statistically significant difference between the number of between the three groups and the number of days of a cold. So we know that somehow the vitamin regimen that someone on is effective in reducing the number of days of a cold. Now, the effect size also should be reported. The strength of the relationship is assessed by, this is just a, the statistical symbol for um, ETA squared, okay? Um, it was strong, and the vitamin C factor accounted for 26% of the variance. The 26% again comes from the partial ETA squared column, and again, it's for the grouping variable. And again, from your basic math, you remember that to convert a decimal to a percentage, you move the decimal place two places to the right, which gives you 26.4%. That's the 26% that you see right here. So again, you easily see how to transfer the data from the test of between subject effects into an appropriate APA results write-up. Now, Notice if you look at this test of between subject effects, it tells us nothing about which groups were different. This is just called the omnibus or the overall ANOVA test. And remember in the video, part one, we mentioned that we have to drill into the data to identify where the specific differences were. That is the post hoc test procedure. Post hoc meaning after the fact. So after we run the omnibus or overall ANOVA, we then run an after-the-fact test to see where the specific differences lie. Let's now examine that. That will be done in what's called the multiple comparison area. And you'll see that the legend at the bottom says the mean difference is significant, represented by an asterisk. If we look here, we'll see the Tukey HSD is which we selected. And remember, we selected the done at C. We would use the done at C if the assumption of equal variances was violated. We use the Tukey if it was not violated. Remember we said that the Levine's test of equality of variances is the test for the assumptions. Because this value, 0.278, is greater than 0.05, this means that our assumption is not violated. Remember, is it a significant violation if it's less than 0.05? So with it not being violated, we report the Tukey HSD data. So notice that we say the follow-up tests were conducted to evaluate pairwise differences. That's what the post hoc test does. There was a significant difference in means between the group that received the low dose of vitamin C and the placebo group. Let's take a look at this. Here we have the reference group in this column. So placebo is being compared to the low and the high vitamin C dose, okay? And we'll see that the asterisk indicates that there was a significant difference between the placebo and this row here, which is the low vitamin C dose. And we just simply state that. Now, again, the vitamin C is being used here as the reference or comparison group. And of course, it will be, um, significantly different from the placebo basically saying the same thing here but again it just shows an individual line with each level or each category being the reference category and you'll see that it just states that all the way down and you'll see that for example the high vitamin c dose was not different from the low vitamin c dose because the sig value. So you can look at this and examine it and play around with it to make sure you understand it. And you'll also know it's significant because you'll look at the sig column. You always can look at the sig column, but the asterisk just flags it for you automatically. Here again, all this is less than 0.05. Again, less than 0.05. So basically where you see the less than 0.05, you'll see the asterisk. 
again, you would lose the done at C area starting here from the placebo down if the equal variances was violated, meaning that the Levine's test was less than 0.05, which it wasn't. You then say that table one, you report, you know, the means, the standard deviations, um, and the confidence interval for the three groups in table one. And I didn't put a table here because you want to practice on how to create a table. I suggest you use the Microsoft Word feature, the table feature. But you'll see in the course text that that table 19 um, identifies all that information. It has the three groups, the M, the SD, which stands for the mean, the standard deviation, um, the placebo group, and the low gross group where the, um, the post hoc test compared those differences. So as you can see from week two, excuse me, from week three to week four, you're pretty much doing the same thing. You're running the appropriate statistical analysis and then you're taking that output and interpreting it and then turning it into an APA results write-up. That is the basics of statistics and that's kind of the process that will follow from week after week after week. The important thing is for you to understand which test is appropriate for which situation and how to understand which variables in your data set are appropriate for running the specific statistical analysis. And that's why I also put in a section on the scale of measurements. Okay, good luck with the week five application assignment, uh, the ANOVA statistical test.